Hallelujah. I want you to go to seven people and inform them something. This is what you're going to tell them. First the first one. First the first person. And say, it's too much. Right up, it's too much. Hey, it's too much. I know. Tell the first person, it's too much. Come on. Right up, it's too much. Tell the first person, it's too much. I know. Right up, it's too much. It's too much.
you see me dance. Turn your mirror. Say when you see me dance. So I cannot continue. Say when you see me dance. Okay, let me. Hallelujah. I know you are on fire. I know you are on fire. Say when you see me scatter ground. At the scatter ground. Like a winner. How many of you are winners? Am I in the right place?
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Minister David. Thank you. God bless you, choir. We release you. We are not releasing you from their home. Just give them a clap. I appreciate God in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You may take your seat. Please, all adults, if possible, come to the middle. Amen. Um, there are some lights missing, and that's why it's a bit dark in some sections and all that. But I want to just thank God tonight for another year of Africa Garden of Eagles. Africa Garden of Eagles is a conference revealed to us in 2009, and we have been carrying on. Even COVID did not allow us to host it in 2020. But we thank God for life. Amen. Amen. Without much ado, I want us to go into the word of tonight. Tonight is a breaking night. Grand breaking night. Hallelujah. Before I bring the man of God, I just want us to look at two scriptures and I will invite him. I welcome also men of God that just walked in. The financial secretary of PFN. God bless you, sir. Apostle Ofo. And also one of the executive who came in, the PRO. I'm, I hope I'm not mixing it. God bless you, sir. <laughs> I, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let's look at George's quickly. George's chapter one. No, Joshua chapter one. So just continue. Joshua chapter 1. And the word of the Lord came after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give you. So the Israelites, to the Israelites, verse 3 says, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the heated country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Is anyone facing limitation? God says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He says, be strong, verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land as sought to their ancestors. To give them, be strong and very courageous, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go hallelujah someone you are somewhere right now but there are certain things that is blocking you from fulfilling certain things fulfilling your dreams bringing that idea into manifestation there are also statutory restrictions but god is saying in these four days limitations shall be broken there might be someone that there are things limiting your joy from manifesting. Jesus says, you have not prayed until now. He said, pray in my name unto my Father so that your joy may be full. Whatever that is limiting your joy to climax, whatever that is limiting your joy to come to manifestation so that they will dance with you like other people celebrated. This week, your limitation shall be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. And we have a man of God tonight who has experienced a shift. He 
He has shared so many testimonies with me. That the Lord has taken him to places people thought it would not be possible. And God has settled him to step into this country and limitations were lifted. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, in, in John chapter 6, you know the story of the feeding of 5,000. There was something that they asked the Lord. John chapter 6 from verse 25, allow me to read. When they found him on the other side of the lake, and they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And I'm saying someone, you'll be given the rope tonight. You'll be given the keys to new doors tonight. To unlock those limitations. But there is something that you need to receive tonight. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. For God, for on him, God the Father has laid the seal of approval. This conference was put together for three, four months ago. And it's one of those that God revealed that it should be in this conference. So it's coming by the seal of heaven. And this is what you must do in verse 28. Then they asked the Lord, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered them, the work of God is this. It's to believe in the one he has sent. I want you to believe in the man of God coming to speak to us tonight. Something will drop into your spirit in the name of Jesus. What you have heard before, you will hear it again and it will become more clearer. Revelation will become much fuller. Because revelation makes all the difference. You will not be a copycat. How your doors will be opened may be different to that person you have been looking at all these years. But now it's yours. Limitations shall be lifted in the name of Jesus. Rise up with me. I want to welcome Pastor Michael Aluko, Senior Pastor. He's a live and faithful ministry, Pretoria, South Africa, and Clarksburg in Northwest. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to our God. The only one that is faithful, ever constant. And before we could continue, we need to thank God for Pastor Abby and this particular ministry. Because we are here because of God, and we are here because he's also here. Let's close our eyes. Faithful Father, we thank you. No one and no one can do what you have done, and is still doing it. Thank you for the church. And thank you for the life of the such man. Blessed be thy name. And this is a conference we have packaged since. And we know you have a plan. And nothing can thwart your plan. So we are waiting to see you. Show forth yourself. And let all the glory be unto you. Thank you Holy Spirit. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. So you may be seated. Amen. To God be the glory. I don't know how uh, Apostle Ono will put it, but I will say a protocol. Is that right? <laughs> it's a blessing to have all pastors seated here. You are welcome, sirs. You are welcome again. And thank God for all the officials and leaders of this ministry. The Lord will come to bless you. The vision will grow. Amen. Vision don't die. Amen. Visions don't die. Years ago, we were blessed to have one of our pastors <clears throat> while we were in Nigeria. And uh, she told us, Jesus Christ was the vision of God. Jesus Christ was the vision of God. And the time came when Jesus died. And the devil was rejoicing. 
but the third day came. And the third day is here. Amen. That's the birth of this conference to bring about all kinds of people together and so that they can enter into their own destiny. There's a time a friend had a challenge and they were praying. <clears throat> God, where is your eyes? Where are you now? And I was told by a friend again that God spoke to them where my eyes was when my son was on the cross. So whatever you are going through, limitations have been there. You will get instructions, revelation to unblock yours as you move. And those who are coming behind you will get there too. Your child will get there. It depends on revelations and instructions. And just like Pastor Abbey has said, my instruction is always different from yours. So you need to be patient tonight and get from him. The Lord will bless us. Breaking limitation. And uh, I have no other thing than the Bible. Tomorrow we are bringing business. I'm a pastor, full-time pastor, career pastor, ordained pastor. I didn't buy it. I was ordained. I was ordained. I went through all the process. And I was ordained by the special grace of God. I knew the day I was called. I knew the day. I knew. So Genesis chapter 1. So I'm only here only by the Bible. That's my strength. That's my wisdom. And uh, before I continue, I'm highly blessed to be here with my wife. Amen. She's a teacher of the world too. A doctor, she's out to work outside now so that we can put food on the table. Every pastor knows if you are in South Africa and uh, you need to trust God. So that's why she's outside working at the university. The Lord bless you. You are welcome. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. There we find out that God creates. God. It means there is a God. So whatever we are here for tonight, that's the beginning and that's the end. Without God, we talk nothing. Without God, we cannot exist. Without God, I can't talk. I have nothing to say. He gave us a commission. Go raise leaders and tell them I am alive and faithful to my words. And so we have no other name that is alive and faithful to ministries. Ministry is work. And so God is the author of this world. He creates. And Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God make them. Male and female, God made them. He made them. No others, only him. And in 28, God bless what he created. I'm trying to lay some foundations as fast as we are. God bless what he has created. And the teacher came to us and said, to be blessed means nothing is broken, nothing is missing. So, the Bible let us know through David that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are not a mistake. In the world, he created. In the world, he created. The origin of the world is God. In verse 28, the Bible let us know that he bless you, he bless me. So you are not, even if you are born into a family that all kinds of things may be there, but God created you. We were just chatting at the office there, and I did not talk because we were talking about the message, so I kept quiet. There was a time on my home because I suffered a lot, my brother. That's why I can tell anyone that poverty is not good. Until God break it for you, you can't break it. It continues. It's going to be like a cycle. So poverty is never, never good. Uh, we are not poor, but we are poor financially. Because a parent did not go to school. Education is not you go to school, but you need to have a brain for some things. And so I suffered a lot. I suffered a lot. And so I, I was just wondering one day, why do I have to be born into this particular family? So I cried, cried. We were living in a place in the uh, Kara State then called Kenjini Busa. That's where we have the dam then. So I was walking on the streets. I'm going to die. I'll jump inside the dam. So I was just walking, walking. Why did I got tired? Because I'm almost 10 kilometers to where we are living. 
So I just slept on the road. That's the major road. They let me any car come, just crush me, let me go. But no car came. All they saw me, they bypassed me. Why? It's not your time. It's not your time. So God bless what he created. And when God bless, he bless. Nothing can change. The Bible says nothing can thwart his plan, his purpose. His purpose are real, they are genuine. And in Genesis again, chapter 1, verse 2. There the Bible says what God created was without form. What he created was without form. There was darkness. But the Bible said the spirit of God. The spirit of God was there. The spirit of God. Even at that beginning. And wherever we have the spirit of God. The Bible talks about liberty. And where there is the spirit of Jesus. There is liberty. Liberty for what? And that's where the team come from. Liberty now, whatever was formless, whatever was empty, human being that God created and blessed, they are to put shape to it. They are to put light by the grace and the empowerment of the spirit of Jesus. Of Jesus. And so tonight, as brief as this may be, my prayer for us, and I say again that thank God there are pastors here, there are bishops. If you are not serving this God, please serve him. We are in a terrible time. And pastor, may God help us as to give the right word, the right food for the people of God. The Bible says it's clear. Judgment will begin from his house. Very, very clear. Judgment will start. And if judgment will start from the house of the Lord, then where are we going to? Hallelujah. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 11 4. And the Bible says, what do you see? I need that we read quick, quickly because I need to finish and to finish on time. Because we will pray too quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 4. Whatever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever. Whoever looks at the cloud will not reap. At the beginning, the Bible says he blessed us. He pronounced and he declared blessing. And the moment that blessing comes upon you, come gift, come skill. So we have to learn, we have to acquire along the line. And we still have to acquire. So if you are waiting, if you are still longing, then the limitations will be there. There are a level your parents can take you through, there are a level you have to go through yourself. So when the Bible says this, it's clear. You can know what there are things you have to do. There are things I have to do. One of the basic things you can learn easily is language from where your parents come from. Why? You are so close to them. So if you are not close to God, there's no guarantee that limitation will be broken. Because limitation, it sits there, it's finished everything. The Bible says forever, oh Lord, your word is settled. We need to assess it so as to be able to operate here. Access what I've been said to, which is for you, which is for me, and then you can operate legally here. And so what is limitation? What is now limitation? The part our pastor said it is just restrictions. It's restrictions. It comes in various ways. Some we inherit them. Because we are from Africa now, they are, I'm in Nigeria by his grace. No problem. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Anywhere you travel to, the moment you present that green passport, that is a limitation on its own. It's not a cause. No, no, no. But it's just a limitation. Now, every immigration will look at you with strange eyes. They have to look at you. If you, did, you didn't do that. It was not a sin. You were just born there. 
I, I was, I'm privileged. I have a junior brother that said in America is now a citizen. Thank God for that. By the time he was to go initially, he was going to go to France. The guy said, stop there. And he stopped. And people were going, who are going, who are going? <laughs> who are going, who are going? See, if a, a brother was walking by, who is a Nigerian but with American passport? And he stopped and said, why are you embarrassing this young man? Is it because in Nigeria? I am a Nigerian too. I'm just privileged to have this. What do you want to check about him? Check him, let him go. So some we are just born there. And when you are born there with that kind of restriction, then you need to break it yourself. What will you do to break it? Some is because you are born to a family. I was, I didn't ask God to get me into a local family. That you guys are poor, man. <laughs> well, there's nothing I can do. So I need now to do some extra thing beyond my colleagues and friends in order to achieve that which God said I should come here and do. So these are some fundamental things you need to get, and including pastor. Whether you like it or not, you are in South Africa, the rule is against you, the law is against you, the doctrine is against you. So how are we going to survive? So we need to find a way. That's, those are limitations, and there's nothing we can do about them. We walk around it with God on our side, and we get to where God is taking us to. Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh, as you, as you are here, I don't know what kind of uh, thought is on you, or is going through your mind, but by the reason of the word of God, you can make it. Tomorrow, I think uh, that's where we're going to have the business, guys. On Saturday, I, I pray some of us will be here. I I'm trusting God that some protocol will have to be taken care of so I can attend. Because you learn. When pastors, we need to learn to have a business. I'm not a business, but I'm a businessman. Because I need to know the principle. Some of them have made it. That's why they can be invited. You don't invite a failure. You don't invite a failure. Why will you invite a failure? Somebody who is struggling himself or herself. He has nothing to show. And so you need to, you don't need to go and do juju, become 419, pretend. No, it's not there. It's not there until it is there. And God, who created us, said it will be there. Amen. So if limitation is restriction, I will just give one example tonight. And I trust God that God will take over. Moses was born at the wrong time. Isn't that? Moses was born at the wrong time. But the Lord who delivered him to that parents, he knew he came for a purpose. And that purpose cannot be thwarted. Nothing can restrict that purpose. Nothing can hinder that purpose. Why? It's from above. His parents, when he came, they knew this boy is special. Why? They don't know. But it's not that this guy, you can't throw him away like others. You are different. When God says initially, you are wonderfully made. I, I, I was traveling and I was to enter a particular country. And the guy, the immigration, where is he told? Well, I don't know. Look at me. I said, where are you from? I'm from South Africa, but you carry a South uh, Nigerian. I said, yes, I'm in Nigeria. Okay, so you know you know you can't enter this country. I say, sorry, it's not possible, sir. He said, why? Because I serve the one who's higher than you. He looked at me, he looked at me. Ah, there's nothing I can do. I represent him. If he does not show forth, take me anywhere then. But that's who I represent. He said, Are you a guy or Igwe? I said, I'm a guy. What do you say? You can go now. It's a limitation. Some in South Africa, where we are now, some schools, foreigners cannot go. They will not admit you. It's a matter of time. Why? Those who are born here, and they learn the language, and they can speak frequently, easy. A time is going to come where they can demand their rights. So when there's limitation, I will just share one or two things that is working, and it will work for you. Others will be added. 
at the end of the conference, you become that man, like Joshua, that anywhere you get and there's any obstacles, are you for me? Oh, I'll crush you now. That's what Joshua said. When the angel appeared, he was so bold, he went to the angel and said, are you on our side? If not, I will kill you now. Why would you say I will kill? Because God told him, no man will be able to stand before you not once, not twice, all the days of your life. And Joshua is not let hold. So he knew what God had said, he carried it, he believed it, and was working with it. So Moses told every human being was born at a wrong time. But God orchestrated his life. He orchestrated his life. Therefore, what must be done? What can we do to limit it? Whether you are born there, whether you are, you are into that particular area of your life, where you are, you have a good certificate, you are told you cannot enter here. This place was not designed, it's not designed for you. What do you do? What do you do? The number one thing I wrote here that I believe is biblical is knowledge. If you don't know God, it's knowledge. To know God is knowledge. To know the scripture, not by your head, but by your heart. I am from a place called Christ Apostolic Church, and the founder, Joseph, I will allow you to, he carried out Psalm 151 to 150 in his heart. The assignment in those days was to demolish demons, principalities, and power. Those were his assignment. So anytime he confronts and confronted them, he just recites the psalm. They are coming with their incantation. He has no incantation. He has the psalm. He has the psalm. And as they are going, what is coming, what is going, what is going, what is going, they have to go down. It is the word of God. And so, do you know what you are made for? Do I know? I'm a pastor. I, I'm not into revival. When you come in, I don't come into outside crusade. I can't do anything. I can't function. But in the revival, I'll be there. Pastor, do you know? Do I know? God will only back you up based on your assignment. The assignment that you know. And through that assignment, he'll be guiding you gradually. When, when our music brother came now, you can see him jumping. And he was still singing. Ask him to come and sing. You will live here. <laughs> Simple. Why? I've not been created for that. No. In the church where we are blessed to be pastoring, I'm not a teacher per se. I hear the word and I give it to teachers. Why would I be jealous of that? When the teacher, they are doing their job. When we were to make a website for the ministry, and one of us would say, ah, Pastor, your name? And your wife, I say, it's not me. It's about a team. God himself, when he was to create man, he said, let there be. Let there be. So he gathered the sun, he gathered everyone, and he created it. So when we were to have the website, you, when you look at our website, you see pastor's team. The team. The team. God works in team. Why is pastor not working in team? So limitation because the gift you think you possess that are better than well those ones who are in that church. But they have been there to support. That's all. And they sit there supporting you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 is a place we know. They perish for lack of knowledge. May we not perish in the name of Jesus. I, I need to read for Samuel chapter 3 for Samuel quickly chapter 3 uh, verse 7 but let me quickly start from verse 1 the boy Samuel minister before the Lord that Eli whatever limitation we think we think is so close or is ahead or is limiting or hindering you in marital life in whatever area excuse me brothers sisters God place you in the place where you can learn. That's the place going to grow you. Because you know what lies ahead of you. 
there you can develop all kinds of moves, strength. That when you get to that level, you are no longer afraid. Because somewhere you have been, you are, it's bringing you from, you have been trained there. You have been trained. And so Samuel was under Eli. In those days, the word of God was rare. There were not many visions. It's a place we know, but I need us to go quickly to verse, to verse uh, 4. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. He ran to Eli and he said, no, I have not called you. Verse 6. Again, the Lord called. Excuse me, brother and sister. The, the Bible said God was here. Samuel was here. Even though he was so close to the, to the hack, but he knew not, nothing about the hack. I'm learning too. Okay. <laughs> but this is the one God was preparing to be the next prophet. No one. Not yet. God himself has not revealed himself to him. So he needs to learn where under the man called Eli. Under the man called Eli. So when God put you somewhere, open your eyes. Is you are there for a purpose. Amen. I am there for a purpose. And if you don't yield to instruction, if you don't yield to knowledge, to discipline, whatever, everything God wanted you to know there, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't grasp it. So, Ella, I mean, Samuel was there, and God was there, and God called Samuel. Samuel ran to where Eli was. But still, God waited here. He waited the first time, he waited the second time. Why? He's a patient God. And so, in verse 7, the Bible now says, Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Samuel did not yet know who created him and who declared him blessed. Brethren, you may be in the church. If you don't know Jesus, it's nothing, no. It's not enough. This guy was sleeping by the hack. By the hack. But he does not know the Lord. One of us was on television one time and he saw a pastor preaching. And he said, the Holy Spirit said to him, you know that man preaching is not yet born again. He said, that man preaching is not yet born again. And he's a pastor. Now, this is the greatest error we can ever have in our time. Because everybody must go through limitation. Limitation in another world can be said to be wilderness. You will go through your period of training. When no one will know you. Uh, brother, uh, uh, it may not be you. Did you produce an album yet? Sit down. Have you produced any album? Uh, God bless you. We had a brother, his name is, uh, what's his name? A uh, uh, King Card something. Uh, uh, he's well blessed now in Nigeria. He travels well. He said he has produced about uh, several albums, but nobody will buy it. <laughs> and if no one buys it, how would they know you? But on that day, he went to the mountain again to pray. And one of the people that knew him said, Bra, Elijah, Elijah came today, said, uh, uh, what, what do you, he said, I'm here to pray. He said, okay, uh, let me introduce you to the man of God. He said, ah, well, they don't know me because all the album I produce, no one buy them. And they gave him five minutes. And under that five minutes, what he has been carrying all the while, that no one saw, and let loose. Miracles happen. He was right there, invited to America and the rest like that. When you have the right knowledge, the primary one is the knowledge of the word of God. In our time, God speaks to us by the word. In time past, thank God for prophet, thank God for the office of prophet. He's still speaking though. But we are told, read the Bible for yourself. Don't, don't, don't let somebody read the Bible for you. We are begging people to read the Bible now. Thank God for those of us that we are here. If you read the Bible today, could you? Okay. Thank God. No pastor. If pastor don't read the Bible. <laughs> we need to beg people. People say what? I'm in a hurry. I'm so much in a hurry. I will read it when I come back. When they come back, they are tired. 
And so the light has not been there from day one to guide them. To guide them. And so he says so. So unless you have the word and you have knowledge of the word, not just information, don't just go to Bible because it's not about Bible calling we are talking about. It's to know the owner of heaven and earth. Anywhere you get your limitations, it's a stepping stone. There are limitations that you have to be there, you have to be there for a long time. He knows the time. Only him. And unless there is that communication between him and you, when I'm saying him now, I'm talking of God. I'm talking of Jesus. I'm talking of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The next one quickly is power. The knowledge gives you power. Where I come from is called the anointing. That's why you have to go to mountain. You have to have a separate area where you go and commune with God. No business can survive without prayer, no, without power. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 12 verse 29. Jesus said, you cannot enter into a strong man's house. You must first of all bind that strong man. This territory that a strong man in charge, assigned by the devil. But because we are here as light, nothing can comprehend light. It's sure, nothing. Nothing can stand light. And we are children of life. This place is occupied for a purpose. And that purpose, nothing can thwart it. Amen. Amen. Number three is prayer. Like the pastor said, these are things you have heard, but these are things you need to do again. Do them again. Amen. First Thessalonians, we know in chapter 5 verse 17, say, pray continually. Keep praying. Okay, I look at my time. The one I was to share with Apostle in the while we were upstairs. A few years back, I was tired, tired, tired. And I was privileged to travel, so I went to Zambia. And I got to this man, and that's my first time of meeting him. I was just pouring out all the complaints since I was born. I just complained for one hour, 45 minutes. And the guy just sat there listening to me. And after I finished, he said, Brother Mike, your case will end in victory. And the victory shall be sweet. That's all he said. And I received that as word. Of knowledge from God for my spirit. And I left Sunday. I went back to the jail. I was still not satisfied. So I went to my spiritual father. who's about uh, almost 90 something years now. He's blind. And I said, sir. I, 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 if no one tells me to. I know you will tell me the truth. After prayer, what next do you do? You getting it? After pray, what do you do? It's after prayer, it's prayer. <laughs> and he began to give me analysis. And some, I knew when those things happened to him. Because I'm still alive, I continue praying. I left in Lori where he stays. I went to Lagos to build my bishop. Bishop Bolani Odeleke. That's where I grew up. And I said, Mama, all people are liars, okay? I need the truth now. What do you do after prayer? He said, sit down. So I sat down. You know in my life, what happened at this time? He said, yes. How you do conquer? It's my prayer. You know at the time when you were here, what happened? Yeah, it's prayer. This. He said, look at the car outside there. It's as a result of prayer. So when things do not happen, you still pray. I'm about to finish tonight. You see, but the problem with us, including me, I don't know about other bishop here now, when you pray a little and something is not happening, you just throw away the button. So it's not working. It's not working. And that's why we find some of our brethren who are pastors consulting. What, what do you have to do with Abalis? What do you have to do with things that is not of God? Because it's not working. And it's not working for now. It is for now. It's for now. Uh, I share with this with 
Pastor Abi, because for me to travel to South Africa, it's a talk of war. But there is a, when I was to marry my wife, God gave me a word. Gave me a lot of word, dreams. Prophecies. Prophecies I didn't beg for. Not just from small, small pastor, from big men of God. And when the crisis began, the Lord said to me, when you are receiving those words, when you are receiving those revelations, was there anything that hindered them? And I said, nothing. I said, nothing will hinder them when the fullness of time comes. You have the fullness of time to manifest. I have the fullness of time created by God and God alone. So as we continue in prayer, encouragement comes to your spirit. As we continue in prayer, you have the boldness to get up again. And the Bible talks in 1 Samuel chapter 30 about David. God said about David, this is a man after my heart. And the time came, we were asking all these questions. We, and we asked the church too. Why would God ordain this man and say you are a king? And then send him to the bush. Have you ever thought about that? And he was before his people and they pronounced him, Oh, a king David. But it was not sent to the throne. It was said again to the bush. How will you like that, sir? Wouldn't you ask God, why am I doing the bush now? I'm supposed to be a king. I'm supposed to be in the palace. But God did not do that. He did not do that for David. He said, David came back to the palace to come and sing for the rejected king. He was playing the guitar when King Saul is a uh, God, who sent Samuel? Samuel should be asking the question too. God, is this what you meant when you said, send me to Jesus' house? And David should be asking the question. But God now brought him back. The only time he entered the palace was, but Samuel, let's take quick notice and let's examine quickly that area. When David was to be brought back, some people say, we saw him. In the bush, he was not hiding. What was he doing? He was simply practicing what the future looked like. He never knew what was ahead. But he was not idle. He was not idle. You are born for a purpose. Your purpose will take you out. Don't be idle. Be diligent in what you find to do now. Elisha was behind Elijah. And the Bible say the only thing he does there was to pour water. But he was pouring that water diligently. With all focus. With all energy. To the level that when the fullness of time came, he knew what was in Elijah. The rest, they were only prophesying. But a, a, Elisha knew, he knew Elijah so close. When eventually Elijah said it out, what do you want now? I only want a double portion of this. I've watched you closely. I've watched you closely. So when you are serving, be diligent there. Be diligent there. Be diligent. The Bible said, do you see a man who is skillful, who is diligent, whatever he's doing, will not stand before an ordinary man. That's why by the time Elisha was to come back, 50 people were waiting ahead. 50 prophets. And Elijah came, he became their leader. Just like that. What is limitation? It is to train you. It is to train me. I put something here. Sir, never copy another man's dream. Never, never copy another man's vision. You may be a musician, yes, but you have a style of yours. You may be a pastor, you have a style of yours. Yes, we serve the same God. Uh, 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 my wife said, don't call them your friend. There was a guy, we worked together. 
and I call a friend because he will visit me in the office. Redeem were doing their fasting, he started fasting. And I asked him, he said, but the boy is my mentor. Then I asked the question, do you know him or does he know you? I personally, who is your mentor? Who is your spiritual father? Don't copy. Because it was easy for him or her, you don't know where they are coming from. You don't know the price. Generations have prayed, paid before he began. Never, no matter how, the one who gave to you is original. And he will never condemn you for whatever, I mean, he will not test you over what you are not given. Never. And I finally, he will establish whatever he has given to you. You will be divinely established by the finger of God. No one put their trust in this God that they were put to shame. There's no record now, I mean in history, and there will not be record now. Why? You will not be the repeater of that. No one God call, either into ministry or into business, or into whatever you are doing out there. I think through our day I learned out there is called marketplace. And that's why we pray, because my wife is now working in the marketplace as well. Out there, anyone called a child of God that depends on God, there is no way they can be put to shame. Limitations, he created the world. And he created this place to be inhabited. The scientists have been able to break through. They were able to go into moon and help us kinds of things. How? Now we don't know whether they are Christian, but they carry a Christian principle. How much more we that we are alive in Jesus Christ. We are alive in Jesus Christ. The Lord will help us. It will not be difficult. When I say it will not be difficult, sometimes we cry. When in South Africa, when you cry, cry alone. Cry in the closeness. Why? They only give you tissue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't solve anything. I've just heard from uh, Apostle Ono tonight that don't lay your complaint before the church, but turn your problem to Jesus. Hallelujah. Teach the church about faith. But Pastor, you have some challenges. So you face Jesus. Help me all. It is well. Amen. I need us to read Psalm as I close. The book of Psalm 66. Psalm 66 from verse 8. The Bible says, praise our God. We continually praise him. All people, including you and I, let the sounds of his praise be heard. He has preserved our life wonders and kept our feet from sleeping. Good. But now from verse 10. For you, God, tested us. How many of us are ready? You refined us like sliver. Want to refine sliver, then you have to go through fire. And when fire is burning, the Bible says it will not consume, it will not burn you. What do you do? Where do you run to? When God set in fire on your path. The Bible says, you brought us into prison. This is God. Bringing you and I into prison. In a prison like Jeremiah, you cannot do what you like. He can't, you can't. He watched Jeremiah being lower into that deep. He watched him, he opened his eyes. Jeremiah, the prophet of God, he watched him. He was lower there, he was put in prison. The Bible says, and lay body on our, on our backs. He lay bodies on our back. The kinds of body you cannot restrict. You allow it. One pastor said to us, when God send you to school, he does not need you, your permission. He just enrolls you. And there you are. And so look at verse 12 quickly. You let people ride over our heads. That's the Bible, not man. We went through fire and water. But... But after all limitation being dealt with, limitation by marriage, 
limitations by environment, limitations by all kinds, they are meant to be broken. And that is the result. If only you can exercise patience, if only you will acquire knowledge of who God is for this level. At this grand floor, there are limitations. Somehow, somehow, you overcome. And the more you grow, when you get here, there are limitations here that is willing to push you back. It's not allowing you to come up. No, 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 you can't come here. This place is not meant for you. So you need to stand here and do all you can in Christ Jesus. Do you know sometimes, God who is the author of life, we not even allow you to curse. You want to curse now, you are angry. We say, don't curse. Bless them. Pray for them. Bless them. Pray. What do you do? Oh, you can only do that when you know God. And then you ascend again. It takes you up. It takes you up. It takes you up. And finally, you are where your destiny is. Where the light will be shown. Where men and women over begin to see you. They now call you. And when they call you, you just say, praise the Lord. Tell them where you are coming from. And say, if not grace, I will not be here. It's not easy. But God stood with me. He helped me. They asked Apostle Paul. Paul, how did you get here in 29? Huh? With all of this coming against you? So I received help from the Lord. Everyone God created the strategy change. What is your own strategy to use now? When he was to deliver the Israelites, he gave him a staff. And when he got to the most difficult or the difficult area in this ministry and life, God asked him, where is the star? What is in your head? Moses said, use it. And Moses used it. And he said, where is the star? What is in your head? Moses said, use it. And Moses used it. And he said, where is the star? Moses Can you see And Moses used it. And he said, where is the star? Moses Can you see And Moses used it.
problem. So you won't know you have power until you see problem. You will never know that there's power until you encounter problem. It just come on the inside of you like that. It's been part and parcel of you. May the Lord help us as we all gather at this conference tonight. It's the first day. The Lord by spirit will guide you. You are in his hand. I am in his hand. You are here by the grace. Because God helped you to pass. There are those ahead of you. You will pass again. As long as you are so close to God. He will give you divine instruction. The instruction he gave unto Moses was not the same he gave unto Joshua. But the two of them are needed to take the children of Israelite to the promised land. You are involved in his plan. I am involved in his plan. So you need that instruction for your son, for your marriage, for your home. And if you're a pastor or apostles, you need that for your ministry. And it shall be well with us. Shall we stand and let's pray together? Limitations are meant to drive us back. They are meant to think the man bantle, the mantle in our hands. But we go, we not drop it. So one prayer, we're going to pray together. Ten minutes after eight. Father, strengthen me so that I can stand. When I was in my fathers and my pastors, the only thing I could do then was to give up. We have been told, and I've read it to the pastor design. Pastor, pack it up. Will I pack it up too? Why? Why would all that pack it? Why would not pack it up? I don't know what to do. When I don't know what to do, I'll pack it up. But his grace came. Somebody came to our office and said, Do you know this one they selling cocaine in the office? And I said, Yes. What do you have to say? I said, nothing. Say, Me that you are seeing, if not grace, I will sell it. Ah! They have children. They are married. They will pay rent. So if grace is not there physically, how we do? Because when you get to a crossroad, which is always open to every natural person, whether you are spiritual or not, you get there at the end of the month you must pay rent your landlord is not interested whether you're a Christian or whatever it's about money what will you do? what will I do? ask God keep me standing that will change our utterance we will change our utterance now I'm no longer a pastor I need to go and look for a job I'm not a businessman no, 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 no. You are called, you are called. They will not sack you at that place. No. The husband will not ask you to go. And I'm uh, 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 and I waited. I'm not waiting. She got it right at the end of the day. You will get it right. You will get it right. You will get it right. Lift up your hands. Father Lord, I pray tonight. Keep me standing. Keep me focused. And give me the strength. So I begin to pray. Pray for yourself. As a student, you need to keep going. Just keep going. In your business, just keep going. The focus, the strength, it's not by power, it's not by might. You can't let me go alone. You can't let me go alone. The one we say to you, you better deny the Jesus. Like Job did. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny Jesus. Whatever it is you are seeking for, whatever you want to become in this world that God created, you need Him. You need Him. You cannot do anything outside of God. Outside of God. Keep me standing. Keep me focused. And give me the needed strength. Keep me standing. Keep me focused. And give me needed necessary strength. To the glory of your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we thank you. And we worship for our first day. Abraham met with limitations. Abraham left with limitations. I 
Isaac, pick it up. Isaac conquered and left limitation. The trees, they, 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 it's like they were born into limitation. But they left because they conquered. It is our season, it is our time. Whatever be, whatever we are meeting now, and we regard it as limitation. But we have been born by you, empowered by you, to overcome. Because he that is born by God, overcometh the world. We are overcomer. We are overcomer. We are overcomer. Therefore, I pray to you tonight, that you will keep us standing. You will keep us focused. You will keep us focused. Focus on the dream. Focus on the vision. Focus on the goal. We need the necessary strength. The inner strength that is needed now. The kind of strength that you endowed David with. He was able to pursue despite the other thinking of killing him. We need that strength now. That we can see go on with you. To the glory of your name. Say because at the end of the day, your glory will be shown. And you take all the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Oh, the Lord. That's too small for God. Give Jesus a clap of faith. Give him a clap of faith. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed tonight? Father, we just thank you for your servant. Father, we ask that you bless him. Father, replenish that which he has released. Father, we pray, mighty God, for the revelation of your word, the revelation of the knowledge in you. Father, Lord, we pray that you replenish him, strengthen him, make his voice to be global, his voice to be global, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the word that we have received tonight. We have been blessed, and so shall we follow the word of God. Pursue the knowledge in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and adoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor Michael. I look over. It's, it's a wonderful word. And then um, we please, if you want to, we will put it on our, uh, our YouTube site to, for you to watch it once again. And you shall be blessed. A lot has been released within a short time that was remaining. And they were big, what well, they are revelation on how you break this limitation. And I know I've been blessed. I don't know about you. Are you blessed, sirs? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Amen. Let's put our hands once again. Thank you, Pastor Mike. It's a wonderful word that we have received. It's setting us up. And it mentioned exactly what also I mentioned on Sunday, which I've not finished, about your thoughts. Don't be limited by your thoughts. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. You know, limitation is a test. Limitation is a test. Hallelujah. But God always break it. God always break it. You know, some of you, maybe your permit is a limitation. You will receive favor. Favor. Favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. They said even if you are carrying green passport, you shall be favored. Let's give Jesus a clap of it. Hallelujah. We need to bless the Lord tonight. I want to call one of the uh, uh, Apostle Frank Equally. My good friend. Please bring the anointing from the south. Take our offering tonight. Let's welcome Apostle Frank all the way from the south of Johannesburg. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bring greetings to everyone here tonight in the name of Jesus. I greet my fathers, apostles. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Abe. Thank you for bringing us. This is wonderful. Papa, thank you so much. The word blessed me so much. Thank you, sir. Amen. Praise God. It is time to offer unto the Lord our offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, most times when it comes to offering time, that is when most of us becomes truly born again. Amen.
Amen. I was um, I was taking some group of men to baptize them back in the days in Nigeria, and while a young man was coming, and he realized he's entered the water somewhere here. He realized that he has his wallet at the back. So he said, Pastor, hold on, let me drop my wallet. I say, come back. Because that's why when some of you is when it's offering time, you you start speaking in tongues. So I need to baptize you together with your wallet so your heart is born again. Your wallet is also born again. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to give unto the Lord tonight cheerfully and bondfully. Amen. Can we take out our offering? And I want you to appreciate God because of these blessings that we have received here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Take out an offering. And I want you to appreciate God with that offering. There are certain limitations that your giving breaks as well. Amen. Praise God. There are certain limitations that until you are a giver, it can be broken. I said to the, um, to the assemblies of God under my care that if you are not a giver and you are walking in the streets of Johannesburg, and you hear somebody say, take, take, don't turn around. They are not talking to you. <laughs> Until you become a giver, then you are permitted to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. With that being said, can we begin to appreciate God with our offering and say, Father, thank you. With my giving tonight, with my offering tonight, sufferings are terminated. Yokes are broken. Limitations in my finances are broken. Poverty is broken. The yoke of poverty is broken. The yoke of lack is broken. The yoke of frustration is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive from your abundance tonight. We receive the blessings of your word. And we receive the manifestations. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Our Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for this gathering tonight. And thank you for this opportunity to give into the kingdom. We pray that your blessings will pursue and overtake us. Even as the scripture says. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we release, O oh Lord, your abundance from this altar upon your children as they are given cheerfully and wholeheartedly. Let your blessings overtake them. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Yeah. <laughs> 
myself on the road. And it was a lot. A lot of stuff gets me. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. You know when something has been wrapped up and caged for a long time? Limitation. Yes, sir. Now, it, that word made me to know that I can do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think according to the power that works in me. And the only thing we're going to say tonight is don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Come on, we're 
Hey, how could I? 